New York City, in many ways, is a crime scene. But to go back to the scene of the crime is to begin to start a process, I think, of deeper healing. This is a 411 with Jessica Washington. This week, we're sitting down with Yusef Salam, member of the Exonerated Five and Democratic candidate for New York City Council, to talk about his race, Trump, and what happened to the movement for criminal justice reform. I want to just dump, jump right into the news. I think that's probably Donald Trump Jr. testifying. Um, I mean, my question is, we saw in New York City the rise of this empire of Donald Trump. How do you feel watching this happen, watching at least this kind of idea of Trump as this mogul that he weaponized against you as a child. How does it feel to watch that fall apart in real time? You know, I had the opportunity while campaigning to tweet just one word, mm. karma. And it got retweeted so many times. You know, it was, it was like wildfire. That ad that was taken out in New York City's newspapers, it was published two weeks after we were accused. It wasn't created two weeks after we were accused. Mm. It was in the workings and, and, and massaged and, 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 and greenlit. And when it was greenlit, two weeks after we were accused, bring back the death penalty was the first words that was read. And what that meant for me and, and, and for my, my, my brothers and my family was they really, were trying to get the system to look away so that the people who were in the darkest enclaves of society would do to us what they had done to Emmett Till. Mm -hmm. People who do wrong and think they got away with it, they become very, it's almost like cavalier. Yeah. They're not even hiding anymore. But that also tells us in a very um, sick way where we are. It tells us exactly where we are. We, have, we are in a very challenging time, and I think the, that more of the people who are trying to add more light to the world need to step up and assume the roles and responsibilities so that we have a fair chance. I've been telling my community, my constituents, non-participation is participation. Mm -hmm. Why did you, after everything you've been through, want to be involved in this city and this system that hurt you in the way that it did? New York City, in many ways, is a crime scene. Mm. But to go back to the scene of the crime is to begin to start a process, I think, of deeper healing. There's a tendency in the most impoverished neighborhoods not to participate. There's a tendency f to be jaded. There's a tendency for systemic issues to be kind of like, they'll figure it out someday. Yeah. But the truth of the matter is that we have to participate. We have to participate in such a powerful way that we begin to believe in ourselves again. We begin to believe in the power of organization. You know, when my mother said to me when I was 15 years old and I was in the precinct, you know, I, they, they already started to interrogate me. She said to me, when she finally got the opportunity to speak with me, they need you to participate mm -hmm. in whatever it is they're trying to do. Do not participate, refuse. And I've been carrying that with me. I had to carry that back into the interrogation room, learn to stand my ground, right? I had to take that into the prison when we lost and learn that I had to do the time, even though it was unjustly given to me, and not let the time do me. We have to make sure that we give ourselves the ability to what I call see in the dark. We have to, like, literally, we can't play checkers. We can't play and, and plan for the weekend. We have to start anticipating strategizing, understanding that our plan has to be 100-year cycle plans. And on top of that, it has to ensure that we utilize history to be our best teacher.